let me uh, invite uh, sandeepan chattopadhyay a good friend uh, who i will address at sandy he is a founder uh, of uh, of zelmock uh, design and tech uh, and also been a serial entrepreneur uh, but uh, sandy thanks for joining us on this edition of walk the tech talk it's wonderful Thank to have you here and get uh, some you know uh, insights from your a uh, long experience and also the innovation you're doing so quickly give us uh, let's let's uh, while we're going to be talking about uh, data science for skills assessment i thought it'll be good for everybody to know a little bit more about you so quick description of what zelpmock does uh, as a startup uh, but you also work with others so let's begin with that so essentially we think of ourselves as uh, the tech co-founders for startups which need good tech and which are essentially uh sort of synchronized with our team and our team is heel which is health education agriculture and livelihood and anything which sort of caters to the next 700 million indians which can later translate to the next 3.5 billion world citizens that's our primary target market so we work with entrepreneurs who are very uh, rustic who actually can uh, know the problems because these need a different set of entrepreneurs to solve the problems and many times they find it very difficult to get the good tech so if, especially if you're a business a founder uh, getting a tech team and keeping it and getting a tech co-founder is often a big hassle because there's a, some sort of a, a, a kind of a movement of text to a tech and all those things so we come in as a tech co-founder and we do not just advisory which most people do but actually the dirty hauling of uh, getting the whole thing done and our model is essentially working with this sort of a, now when we say startups we don't mean only startup companies a startup is more of a mindset even corporates can have startup ventures inside their thing so we work with many corporates on their new uh, innovation centers as they like to call it instead of startups but we consider them as kind of a independent inert sense which work like startups inside the inside the corporate and also with the government we try to push Uh, a lot of this new technologies to show them the effect of it wherever it benefits the mass markets and also to showcase the startups that we are working with to show that this is what we can do with all these things on that part that's roughly so can what can you share can you share a couple of examples of what's in your portfolio in terms of sure, so for example we have a uh, two three of them are pretty big now mihoop obviously is lot in the news now it recently got as a default uh, speech to text engine for all tata vehicles which are coming out now that's a vernacular speech to text engine and it works in offline scenario keeping in mind uh, any of the third world countries bad bandwidth or you know on that part and the other thing is we are multilingual and all those things expecting a single language for india along with dialects is different we have 22 official languages probably 40 odd languages which is spoken more than a million people and up to number of dialects so this one learns very fast and can hindu but if you look at the broad picture what it does it it enables a lot of people who are not very literate friendly or not effectively literate or illiterate to be able to use compute just by using speech as an interface between man and machine so thinking of speech as a man machine interface fortigo for example is trying to solve the fintech problem of a very important part of india logistics so everything you buy everything you do ultimately has to come from somewhere so there is a truck in between somewhere and we look at how to optimize the truck and it's more like a fintech for the trucking industry where we try to get them easy access to working capital or access to solid orders with a pay up part and sort of manage and orchestrate their entire flow for truly digital transmission of anything to do with the finance part of it as well as natural monitoring and all of it <clears throat> then it's, there is it's, it's fascinating sir even that uh, you know today's world Uh, the industries are colliding so well uh, in the sense that their difference is not there so you put you use uh, phrases like uh, logistics and freight in the same uh, breath as fintech while a lot of people you know while you just getting used to the concept of fintech you don't realize that it also has application in different verticals i want to come to now uh, sandy on on the key issue of uh, data science uh, mm-hmm. and uh, skill assessments but data science is something which uh, seems like a new uh, phrase and everybody talks about it but a i think that there is not enough uh, uh, understanding of it because it has many dimensions and b in my understanding it's not even new i mean data science is something which has been there and you are an alumni of uh, you know the indian statistical institute so can you help us understand what is data science and what we should think about when we say data science I think we as Indians should get the concept of buzzwords much better than others because we ultimately had Vishnu coming in different avatars, right? So of course it's just a different avatar and a different type for this times 
so that people understand. So it, I think it's more like uh, just like Foxy and Oxypo vilification became popular in India after Shashi Tharut tweeted it. But the word always existed for up to ages. Uh, if you look at the key word data science, it has always existed. It has it predates uh, statistics. Every rule of physics that you look was actually the entire process of science is about observation and coming to conclusion from observed data. So data science as a subject has existed since logic has existed. But why are we talking about data science now is because of two, three things. One is uh, the cloud has happened. What does it mean? It means accessibility to compute on need, storage on need, and not having the knowledge or the internal know-how to set up a behemoth to manage the data science capability is now certainly one of the things. The tools have improved. The compute is way cheaper now. The power of uh, my phone is more than the supercomputer we used when I was a student. And it was a supercomputer, VAX, VMS, 8650. It used to take a whole floor. The whole of 13th floor in ISI was completely this one computer. And I have more RAM or about four times more RAM on my cell phone today. So technically, what I could do a number crunching on that there and keep the thing and I had to wait for 12 hours. Today on my phone, I do the similar regression in just about five minutes on my phone. So that and that and, and that's at 6,000 rupees. That probably was a six crore purchase. So if you look at it was data science or uh, new is data science new? No, but is the capability of using it and does it make financial sense now? Yes. So the kind of things you do. So as a general part, data science is the illogical part of maths, right? So where you don't where you have a formula, you estimate. That part was always, always done better than computers. What computers was not good at was kind of compete with the human element of intuition. Data science gives you that insight of competing with human intuition by brute force. And that sort of covers someone non-intuitive to come at the same level uh, of intuition. And I, I actually have discussed and told you once, I believe data science is not about our AI or ML or these are all like specific parts. The primary objective of data science should be, and that's how we use it, is IA, intelligence augmentation. How do I augment the intelligence of anyone and, and try to help? That's a true spirit of software. Like when you use a Photoshop, you're using layers of knowledge of physics and optometry, which you don't need to know about. But the guy who created Photoshop probably doesn't have the aesthetic sense you as a painter have, or, or you are using Word, for example, you are a writer. The Microsoft cannot write the same things you can write, but you cannot write it as effectively without Microsoft. So data science scientists create these tools, but do they know all the uses of it? No, it will take a lot of time for them to sink into every subject matter. But with these generic tool patterns, when a subject matter expert uses it, it just triggers his intuition to use it much, much more effectively. So how does it apply to skills assessment? Uh, a, one is, of course, the fact that people should have the skills for managing data science. But how do you even use it uh, uh, forward? I, I, I'll take a step forward back and tell something which is truly strong about data science and truly weak about data science. So any assessment that you do, typically we say it has a type 1 error and type 2 error. For a simplicity sake, let's say type 1 error, avoidable mistakes, which are human mirror, mirror mistakes or not. A data science driven process can never do a type one error. You can always err on the side of caution. But then there are essential things which are very human in nature, uh, like risk mitigation, where you we do not want something you 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 would rather be wrong, but you would not take a risk onto that part, right? So essentially what is happening is that you are tracking a sense where you are taking data science to a level when you are trying to be, you will never be as good as the best human being but you can get the practices of the best of those particular skill to be accessible to the rest. So if I look at a percentile graph, data science driven process conservatively cannot perform, let's say better than the 85 percentile of people. But what it can do is it can bring the zero to 85 percentile of skilled people to the level of a 75 or a 70 uniformly. So it can, can raise you the lower example? part. Can, 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 you, can you help uh, explain this with an example? So for example, when a, when a, Novice is doing it. Suppose he is doing it without a dictionary and with a dictionary. So when he's writing a note for you, initially, if he is not doing it with the dictionary, you don't give him a dictionary. He'll come come and do so many mistakes that redrafting and all will take you so much time. And he's suddenly performing at let's say the 20% level. 
with time he becomes 80 percentile as his vocabulary includes improves and all. but today you give him a tool called a dictionary which is online and it starts suggesting like a grammarly right that's a data science in work now when you are using it the productivity of that guy is significantly jumping and he's coming to a 70 75 percent his limited vocabulary is still a problem but at least he is not misspelling he's not doing a misgrammar at least he knows the context of the usage and he has probable synonyms which make it interesting all these things now the computer did not write the english language experts of english language worked on a particular way and the computer mimicked what they would have done can it mimic 100 percent never but if they can mimic 90 percent of it that 90 percent as a tool is giving a efficiency increase of 4x 5x to a later person same thing applies to assessment assessment as any of senior management knows is the most difficult thing to do for a manager there are a lot of these soft issues and all and sometimes you yourself though you can make the correct decisions and take the right choices are not able to fathom what led you to do that now the whole aspect of data science is the humility to know that i cannot logicize this but i can see the repetitions of occurrence of this part and still can predict what is most likely to happen though i cannot logicize it so in a way so let me uh, ask you so, yeah, Sandy, uh, just to ask you a practical advice that you would have for a business head a department head or a ceo or a founder what how should that uh, person uh, approach data science for skills assessment what should should there be specific processes should there be specific structures what is the best way to make the most of it so I, I give an analogy to my guys in internally and i think that analogy works because everyone understands it very fast in that case data science is like a very powerful machine gun in the hands of an untrained person it can just wreak havoc and kill the person also and at the end of the day, the person is just an operator of that machine gun. He's like a soldier. The strategy still has to come from the policymaker and all. And the business has to be that person manning that soldier. But the soldier has to be a trained person utilizing, capable of utilizing that ammunition and that gun. In the wrong way of usage, it can actually do more harm than good. Like one of the key problems of AI ML also is if it's not done properly, it gives you the false sense of security that it's following data science. But if the model itself is wrong or the analysis itself was wrong because a wrong person was analyzing it without the right business objectives, it can actually do cascading wrong errors and propagate error even faster. And with the false sense of security that I've done what is best practice. Just fitting in a set of tools is not what the best practice is. Making sure that your business processes are the focus and not some mumbo jumbo technical jargon of data science is being used is the key part it has to do what you want it to do it is the it is that matchmaking of what is appropriate for you that is that i have seen people coming and asking me we should use ml for this so when i ask them why they actually have no answer but then when i ask them what do you actually need then it comes out that you know what this is just a simple sorting problem why do you need ml for that your excel can so, do it so so, so i think you have to demystify that part and think of it just as a language, as a tool, just as the language has a grammar. This also has a grammar. You need to learn from the true grammaticians, but you can write that in, a, in it as well. Once you have learned the grammar and the tools, you have not met the words. Like you, you have not met the word there, for example, or or let's say uh, innovation. Those are words that have them. You can coin a new word much, much later. But your so, chance is in, in using that word. Right. So I think we'll have to conclude on this point, uh, Sandy. What the key point you're making is that identify the objective that you have, your business objective, yes. uh, part A. And secondly, what you should do is make sure that the system understands it and the right people are manning it and therefore design uh, and the you, creation you of data. You check it. See, the good thing about data is almost like a time machine. So you ask them to make a model and you check it on a scenario you knew the end, end, the end result of and you tell them to prove the model and that old data and if the model concludes with what the conclusion was before and does it systematically then you know this is the model worth using so never let go of your common sense just because you're using some jargon i think that's the best uh, line of uh, this conversation because uh, it also means that people don't necessarily need to have a, a tech background don't have to necessarily be engineers Absolutely or not logic is logic but 
use use data science as a tool that you would use uh, uh, an excel sheet or a word document and i think that would perhaps uh, bring better results of course we can go much deeper into this but that's all we have time for so sandy thanks again for joining us and i'm sure uh, people will come back to you with uh, several more questions thank you again for joining Absolutely. us for this thank edition you. of uh, yeah. walk the tech talk thank you